what are our sources of light? Well, there are a few torches. What you'll notice is that in general, this kind of atmospheric light, there's a lot of radiant bouncing to keep the area lit, and it's great. It looks really nice. There's our squid now. Let's look carefully how his tentacles are wrapped up. They're wrapped up around certain areas. So we can assume that if we go near the tentacles, we're going to get whacked. There's also long columns suggesting we can climb up there to get to that point. And this is our putative guillotine. Bunch of spikes, platform, chain. We're either going to break the chain or we're going to drop this fucker on him. Poor fella. Look at him just sitting there. If we look around, we'll also notice that there is a ring in the ceiling up there, which will come handy later. So. We can't go up here. We can't get to it, not even using Lara's new mantling, which I'll show you shortly. So we'll skip along. You can go down here if you want, um, but I'm not going to, I'm going to do it this way. There's an area you can slide down here if you want to, to, to the area, but I'm going to show you um, our little moments. This is what the, I'm going to show you what they've been replacing attachment cutscenes with. At the end of Nepal in Tomb Raider Legend, they kind of tested what, what, what I would call adrenaline moments, which is basically where you have to react very fast to survive. If we look over here, we see a series of three columns in that tentacle, so let's go. She's quite smart, but she jumps this time around. Ooh. And look, this little climbable area ends here. Up we go, and uh oh, that tentacle's gonna smash this. I think they're not bad, those. Um, in some cases, they're annoying, but that, I think that's fine. It gives you time to consider where to go while at the same time giving your opinion of impending doom. That dingling noise means checkpoint. slid down rather than go over the top. The number of different ways you can go in this area is actually enormous. It's one of the great strengths of this game is the approach to environment design. It's very uh, sprawling. If I was going to fully pick up all the treasures in this area, it would take me quite some time. Uh, well, uh, partly because I don't know where they are and I simply explore until I find them normally. If you go down there, you can get the wacker. I could also go around the left side, by the way, using that column I mentioned earlier, but in general, I tend to take this route because I prefer it. Those two large, these two, either side of our gear team, we're holding it in. As we, as we look so we can now see the stunts that we're locked in there. So we have to assume we have to remove the other one before we can drop it. Not just a squiddy, but well, it's not too much other. These runes, by the way, are, are hark back to anniversary. Some of them are Greek letters, some of them are Egyptian um, hieroglyphs, some of them are invented. Some of them, like I said, proto Norse runes. I think it's interesting, which is they've actually tried to represent this is like meant to be the, the, the Ur language from which other languages are descended, so it has elements of all of them. Which I think is a good touch, yes. They did a lot more research for this game than legend. They even went to various different sites. For example, they went to Mexico and took photographs and did studies that this is the environment artist, of all the different uh, types of architecture they were going to simulate. So now here we are. Whenever you see a lever, you give it a yank. It's currently locked, and this is because this is still locked in. So we now know that this is, as it were, the executioner's lever. We also see there's a little area up there we should be able to get to, but we can't jump there. So presumably, we'll be able to mantle from side to side, side to side to side, and get up there. That's what we're going to give it a try later. But for now, let's go to the other side. Yeah. Let's 
suits blocking the other one. Uh, this time, if you look carefully, we can see clearly this one's marked the ring and it's a different colour. And it's not meshed in with the other cogs. Can we give this a tug? It spins, but nothing happens. So this is presumably the board wall. As we drag it along, you can see that it's a notched. See, that's, that's, that's quite attention to detail there. The thing it's sitting on is notched, so it can transfer the power. Or transfer the torque, rather, to the thing. Drop. Give it a yank. I think the tentacle's going to get wound. It's, of course, worth noting that an octopus this size would be highly unlikely due to the scale, or certainly on land. Probably crush another container to handle organs. But get downstairs, I'll get downstairs first. Now it's flawless balance comes to the floor. I'm not going to use that flashlight because it really seems to screw my FPS for some reason. It doesn't normally, but uh, here it does. I'm assuming there are certain kinds of volumetric lighting effects that for some reason my card is not handling properly. So where have we come out? Here is a way back up, if I were to so choose it. There it is. I want to see down there, it's a treasure left. I don't know if I can go for it while he's still there, probably not. Let's see what's around here, probably a treasure. What a surprise. I always shoot them, because I'm violent and she has infinite ammunition. Oh, this one I'm going to change quickly. Um, nice thing about that, it's gameplay options. Uh, in player tailoring, you can actually change the way things work. Enemy health extra, damage to Lara extra, ammunition capacity less. I'm going to go for extra because I like having a lot of ammo. And I think that it's high time she actually used what was going to originally be her signature weapons, which were dual Uzis. In the early concept arc, Tomb Raider 1, she had two Uzis and a string of heads on her belt, and that was going to be her signature weapon. But because you got them so late in the original Tomb Raider, no one ever really clocked that that was what she was meant to be using. And they got stuck on the dual pistols. But then, of course, it's far superseded by one of the other ones you can do to this. Five step. They're all pretty nice. Uh, unrealistic when she's wearing boots. Um, I wouldn't say that it makes very much sense for her to do it while she's on the uh, <laughs> stone floor. There we are. They're great to look at. They serve absolutely no game purpose whatsoever. Unlike, actually, the pole, the, um, the bar gymnastics. Let's see this again. Uh, pole gymnastics, rather. 